Now let's dive into the big daddy first. We're talking about Remgro here. Now remember, this is a long-established investment holding company, founded in some senses by the Rupert family. And then in 2008, a big reorganization, British America Tobacco gets taken out, which at that point is their major asset. And what's left is a South African-listed investment holding company, which has got a broad suite of investments, but principally in the banking and insurance environment, some substantial investments in healthcare, and then a whole bunch of stuff, food, liquor, and some other industrial interests that we'll talk about in a minute. When I say it's the big daddy of the group, it's got a market cap of 138.5 billion rand. So that's pretty hefty. Dividend yield 1.5, I'm seeing here, based on recent distributions. Price to earnings ratio of 20.74 on its most recent results. So there you can see it's done particularly well. And I guess that's on the back of the success that its core holdings have had in the areas that I described. Correct. And those core holdings are Mediclinic. Mm -hmm. It makes up about 27% of the portfolio. Uh, first Rand and RMH, which is bo basically both First Rand. Yeah. That's around 23% of the portfolio. So those two together is half. Another 12.5% is RMI. I was going to say, okay, so you're separating the insurance from the specific banking. Yeah. Correct. So that uh, brings you to 62.5%. Okay. Another 20% there, there and about, is food and beverages. The likes of Unilever, RCL Foods, etc. Right. Um, and then they've got a few other bits to make up the rest. And the other bits are things like Grindrod in the shipping environment. They've got a big investment in Dark Fiber Africa. They own a piece of Total South Africa. Air Liquid, which is like a competitor to Afrox. I don't know, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I've left out. The PG Group, which is in glass, for instance, that's uh, another yes. one. That's not insubstantial. Yeah, so, so these industrial bits have not performed that well the last mm. few years. And that's why as they uh, are diversified away from that segment, and these other investments did so well, as a proportion of the portfolio, those investments actually shrank. Uh, yes. But it's more because the others did yeah. better. Well, let's talk about the ones that did better because that's more appropriately where we should focus. So why did the healthcare thing get so big? I mean, Mediclinic, I suppose they just had a big holding in and then it shot the lights out, grew well in South Africa, did the Swiss deal and it's bolted on well. And now it's just because Mediclinic itself has done spectacularly well over five years, they've done correspondingly as well. Yes, but we must add that they also did one or two rights issues. Mm -hmm. So when they went for Hearst London, the Swiss operation, to take that over, they did use a lot of debt. But then a few years later, they, for instance, decided to um, uh, roll that debt, restructure that debt at a much lower interest cost, but they needed an equity injection. They made another acquisition in the Middle East. Okay, but are you implying that in those capital injection processes, was that open to everyone, or did they do a specific allocation of shares to Remgro? Did Remgro underwrite them and pick up a few more? So most of them were done with rights issues. The one yeah. Middle Eastern one was a placement, but most yeah. of them were done with rights issues. So Remgro followed their rights, also underwrote the rights mm. issue, uh, and through that clawed up a little bit of the yes. shareholding, but yes. also put in more capital so yes. that Mediclinic became yeah. more important in their lives. Oh, and of course, now we've not discussed it, we don't need to go any further, but I think that Mediclinic is one of the most attractive investments available on the market because Switzerland, because healthcare, all of that sort of stuff. So that's a big tick. Let's move on now to the financial services businesses. You know, I'm a bit skeptical of these. We know that banks and insurers are prone to long cycle instability and financial crises and trading blopses and so on. But assuming that's not the case, First Rand Group companies have just been spectacular performers in recent years. They have, and it's probably the bank that have made the least blopses of the big four. <laughs> uh, we saw I the results a, a week ago. Of our community understands uh, <laughs> of the cards in this case. Yes, so they did not make any slip-ups to, to, <laughs> uh, to use the right language. And uh, I must say that um, if you look at the results that were released uh, yeah. a week or two ago, once again, they've altered their provisions. So even though we think we might be at the bottom of the credit uh, um, cycle, yeah. bad debts might pick up, they are very well positioned, very well provided for. So first round we still like, <coughs> and to add to that, uh, RMI as well. Yeah. The more insurance operations, discovery, MMI, and outsurance, yeah. uh, you're getting that mm. at a discount as well. Outsurance is doing great work as they enter not only Australia, but more recently New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Who knows, maybe the US might be on the radar as well. Yeah. So we like the financial services holdings of Remco. Yeah. Okay, that leaves us only with the food business because uh, we've sort of covered and given two big ticks to the others. The food stuff, there's a bit of work in progress. RCL, TSB, Unilever, I don't know how well that does. Robertson's, the Spice people are in there as well. But, you know, that's a solid consumer-oriented theme in a global, you know, people eating more sort of a market. Yes, they've got the chicken exposure through the historical rainbow business. Mm. 
the sugar exposure, as you say, TSB, those two commodity areas, maybe not the best, mm. but the more branded areas that came through Food Corp, uh, as well as a Unilever stake, I think uh, those businesses should do better because it's yeah. more branded products. So as you say, working progress, but longer term, we still have to eat every day. So mm -hmm. I expect those businesses to do better than average going forward. Okay, speaking of better than average, the share price reflects this thing going higher and higher and higher. I mean, is the discount widening? What is the story there? Is there like a dripping roast here that this is much cheaper than its underlying holdings or not? The current discount is around 12 to 13 percent, mm -hmm. which is average mm -hmm. and uh, I would say not attractive enough. So while the mm -hmm. underlying holdings mm -hmm. are very high quality, very attractive businesses in themselves, if you're going to pay uh, not as much as a discount as you really want, only paying 12 to 13 percent of a discount, I don't think that's sufficient given the risks, uh, given the liquidity that you might like, and given the fact that it's traded at a higher discount in the past. Yeah. So I would prefer a steeper discount. Okay, and uh, it must also be said that when we discuss these sectors in forthcoming hot stock shows, it's certainly not unlikely that we would pick a Medi Clinic, that we would pick a uh, First Rand, that we would pick an RMI. And in fact, we have currently a holding in RCL Foods, a tiny one, it must be said. So my thinking on this subject is I don't necessarily want to rush in and buy this one because then I'm sort of neutralizing all these other opportunities. Although, of course, it does present one with uh, opportunity odd conversely to get them all in one go. Anyway, I'm sort of getting myself into a tiz here. I'm going to go with hot on account of the underlying momentum in the long term because I like to give credit where credit's due but well, how are you going to fall on this one hot or not it's a close call I would say because of the quality of the holdings even though the discount isn't that high mm. quality breaks through for me makes a final uh, uh, a difference so therefore I would also say hot excellent so we're going both hot there right